take our Bibles. Very, very simple message tonight. I don't apologize for that, but uh, I, I was looking through the book of Matthew about faith and uh, came across three things that I want us to talk about. One tonight, uh, Matthew 16, verse 8 is the first verse we'll start with. Matthew 16 and verse 8. We've been looking at the fight of faith. You know, it's difficult sometimes to, not, not so much to believe, but to live by faith. And uh, there, are, there are some things that we fight against. This has got to be the most basic one. <laughs> Uh, Matthew 16, verse 8. Um, Jesus had said in verse 6 to his disciples, Take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. Verse 7, they reasoned among themselves, saying, It's because we've taken no bread. <laughs> Which when Jesus perceived, he said unto them, O oh, ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because you've brought no bread? One of the things that keeps us from living by faith is not understanding what God says. <laughs> now, you've never probably experienced this in your home, but on occasion in our home, I say something and my wife gets completely the wrong idea or vice versa. Now, we are professional communicators. <laughs> and yet, sometimes we can't communicate to each other. And God is the communicator. And as he speaks to us, sometimes we just aren't understanding what he's saying. That's not his fault. Uh, they, were, they were reading things into it. They were doing all kinds of things. But uh, he said, take heed and beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. They said, oh, it's because we don't have any bread. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, tonight, uh, just, just briefly, we're going to be looking at, at this. And I want us to go back to Matthew chapter 13. Uh, you, you can disagree with me on this, but I, I think the, uh, this parable touches on some of these things and can help us. Uh, Matthew 13, starting in verse 3, he shares a parable, very familiar one, parable of the sower. He spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where they had not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them. But other fell on into good ground and brought forth fruit, some an hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. He talks on a bit longer, and then he explains to them down in verse 18 and following what basically what he meant. Verse 18, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom, and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one, and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which receiveth seed by the wayside. I'm just going to read, read that much right now. Now that's, he's basically, I think, speaking there to non-believers. You know, people, they hear, there's a lot of people that hear the Bible, uh, they don't understand it, and they don't necessarily think about it. Satan snatches it, snatches it away from them. Um, now, I don't believe Satan does that to us as, as Christians. I don't, Satan doesn't have power over us as Christians. But there are some times as Christians that we don't understand the Word of God. Uh, for instance, that verse we read in Matthew 16 and verse 8. You know, we're, we're so spiritual <laughs> that sometimes we just don't, get the basic thing that, that uh, God is, is saying to it. You know, there's several times in Scripture where Jesus would say things to the disciples, and you can just see the question mark over their head. Can you think of, can you think of one? One that just comes to mind? Yeah, he talked about how he's going to die and raise from the dead. and well, they wonder what he means by that. <laughs> he just meant exactly what he was saying, didn't he? Uh, and there's, there's times when you see the disciples where they, they hear the words, but they don't really understand what, what he means. Uh, I think we see that in our own lives. Uh, 
the Word of God, sometimes you look at it and you think, man, there's a lot in there. <laughs> and, well, I don't know, I don't know it all. Uh, one man said, it's, it's not the bits I don't understand that bother me. It's, uh, it's the bits I do understand. And, you know, God has spoken. And we, as Christians, we need to be doing our best to not only hear, but understand what God is saying. In uh, Romans 10, 17, it, verse we use a lot, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You know, we're, we're not going to have faith if we're not hearing what God is saying and understanding it. You know, there's been a few, there's a few times in Scripture where it talks about God speaking and, and people can hear him, but you know, they're just hearing a noise and they don't hear the words. Uh, the one God is speaking to hears it, hears the word and hears the message. Uh, that, that's not, we don't want to just hear words. We want to hear a message from God. And as we read our Bibles, we need to be careful that we are actually looking to understand it. I think sometimes we make excuses and we think, oh, well, this is God speaking. I'm not going to understand this. <laughs> no, no, God speaks. He's the one who invented communication and he wants us to understand I've used this illustration before. I'll use it again tonight. It's called heart and hand. You, you, you've all got a hand. If you take the letters H-E-A-R-T, you can, you can think of some of the different ways that we need to hear and understand the Bible. The first one, H, is hear. We need to hear the Bible. E is examine. Now, that's basically just a word they use because read doesn't start with E. Uh, uh, read, we need to read our Bible. We need to hear it. We need to read it. Uh, analyze, H-E-A. Analyze means we need to study it. God tells us to study his word. R is remember. Memorize. We need to memorize God's word. And T is think or meditate. Th those are five things we can do with God's word. Hear, examine, analyze, remember, think, and then apply. Now, it, it takes all of those to get a grip on something, doesn't it, with a hand. And uh, for us to get a grip on God's word, we need to more than, do more than just hear it. We need to do more than just think about it. We need to do all of those things, and we need to apply it. Uh, in James, he says, but be ye, what? Doers. Doers of the word, and not hearers only. See, it's not just words. Let me ask you, where, where do you most often hear the word of God? Church, yeah. Go to church. Good place to hear God's word. Now, out in the world, you'll hear swearing, you'll hear the name of God, but you don't often hear the word of God. Uh, talk to people about God's word. You know, if you're thinking about some part of scripture, you know, especially at, at church, ask them. Uh, but there is a warning here. Beware of false teachings and false teachers. Even very well-meaning people can uh, tell you things that aren't, aren't true. <laughs> you know, don't believe just because someone tells you something, but do believe God's word. Hear God's word. Uh, are you reading the Bible? Are you planning to read the Bible? You know, there's a, I was talking to a guy one time and he was arguing with me about the Bible. I said, well, have you ever actually read the Bible? He said, no, but I had a friend who did. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> you're an expert. Uh, are you actually reading the Bible? Uh, do you plan to? Even more, are you studying the Bible? Uh, you're probably familiar with the verse in Acts where he talks about those of Berea. Uh, he says that they were more honorable than those of Thessalonica in that they, what's the, the next word that they, I think it was that they studied, or let me find it. They received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so. So they wanted to know, so they studied it out. You know, as they were being taught, they, oftentimes preachers will say, listen, don't believe me, find out from God's word. And that's true. Uh, we need to be studying the Bible. I, I think it's important many times just to find out what words mean. You know, you can, you can think you know what something means and, and be mistaken. Uh, we had a young fellow that he had memorized. Was, I was teaching at the, a Bible college, and he, we had, had him memorize 1 Corinthians 10, 13. Let's see, how does that go? Uh, there is no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you're able. Well, he thought the word suffer meant, you know, like get beat up or, you know, get poked with hot irons or something. He, he didn't know. And so that verse made no sense to him. And he, he didn't stop and think. Well, I, I explained to him then. Oh, that word means allow. God will not allow you to be tempted above that you're able. What he thought it meant was that you wouldn't suffer so much that more than you could hold on to or something. Uh, 
Find out what words mean. There's a, a book that someone invented called a dictionary. It's really handy. <laughs> and they even have Bible dictionaries. Uh, I use a, a thing on, online called Blue Letter Bible. Now, anytime another person's involved, you have to be careful, but uh, it can help you to see what words mean. Value the context. You know, don't just pull a, a, a verse out and, and take it out of its context. You, you've probably had people do that to you, <laughs> where somebody takes something you say and they, you know, out of context can sound completely different. Don't, I'll use this term, zone out. You ever been reading the Bible and you think, oh, I don't know what this means. I'll wait for a bit that I under, understand better. Uh, you know, don't just zone out. Don't just think, hey, that's okay with fiction, but uh, not with the Bible, you know. Don't just think, oh, there must be something I can, you know, what's the next chapter? Yeah. Sometimes you'll study it front to back, you know, read, read the Bible through. Sometimes you'll study it topically, subjects or words. Uh, be careful you don't get sidetracked into being a, a one study person. You know, there's some people that only, they only think about one thing, uh, you know, whether it's prophecy or, you know, whatever. But uh, study, study it all. And then, are you memorizing the Bible? I've had people say they, they couldn't memorize. I used to be able to ask people if they knew their phone number. Now nobody knows their phone number either. They look on their phone. But, uh, uh, if you can memorize anything, you know, if you know your name, uh, you can memorize Scripture. Um, what is Acts 119.11? Uh, hide God's word in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Uh, there, there's a purpose to it, and uh, God can use it. And then, are you meditating on the Bible and applying it? Uh, we need to be hearing and understanding what God is saying. That doesn't mean that you're going to have to be a great theologian or that you're going to know everything, uh, but you can know something, and you can be learning, and you can have an attitude of a learner. For us to grow in faith, we have to hear and understand. And let me just tell you a couple things God has done to help us. This is exciting. God has given us the Holy Spirit. Look at 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 26. Now there's there's groups that take these verses and make them they turn them turn them every which way and make them say all kinds of things. But this is just basically saying you have the Holy Spirit. <laughs> 1 John chapter 2, verse 26, he says, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you, but the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in him. Now, little children, abide in him, that when he shall appear, we may, we may have confidence, and not be ashamed before him in his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Uh, back in verse 20, he says, you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. This is similar to in the Old Testament where the high priest, they would pour the oil on him, the anointing. And the, the, whole, the oil in the Bible is uh, commonly known, that it's a picture of the Holy Spirit. We, we have the Holy Spirit who can help us uh, to understand God's Word. And uh, that's important. Secondly, James chapter 1, verse 5, God has given us permission to ask. <laughs> he says in James 1, 5, if any man, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. It giveth to all men liberally, and it braideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. <laughs> ask, believe, and that God will answer, and that God has the answer. Uh, he's given us permission to ask. Thirdly, God has given us a church. Now, if you're not taking advantage of it, you don't blame us and don't blame God. But uh, God has given us a church. And we can help each other. We can say, oh, yeah, that's, uh, I'm pretty sure that's what this means. Or, you know, I've got a dictionary you can borrow or, you know, whatever. Uh, God has given us some help to understand. But it involves something that uh, some of us, I think, are allergic to because, you know, we break out in sweat whenever it comes near us. And that's called work. <laughs> uh, sometimes we're, we're going to have to just spend some time and it's not always going to just be fun. Uh, we're going to have to do some work in getting into our Bibles and, and processing what, what God is saying. Part of the battle of faith is we don't understand what God has said. It, that, isn't that simple? I mean, that is, that's so simple, it's, it's just, I, I probably shouldn't even have to say it. Maybe I don't. But uh, if we're not going to understand what God has said, we're not going to be able to live by faith. 
The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's not going to be faith if we don't understand what he says. So we need to understand and, uh, and believe God. Next week, we're going to look at the battle of not believing what God has said. Now, that's a different subject. Sometimes we just don't understand what God has said. Other times we understand what he said. It's, you've experienced it as parents. Did you hear what I said? You say to your child, you know they heard what you said. They know they heard what you said. But you're saying, are you believing me? You know, They heard, they understood, but are they going to do it? Uh, we need to understand and believe God. What that is... What we're talking about here is giving weight to God's word, giving honor to God's word. If different people speak to you, you'll give it different weight. And God's word needs to have the heaviest weight, the most honor. Um, we don't need to honor our feelings. We don't need to honor our thoughts. Just because I have a thought doesn't necessarily mean it's good or true. Uh, we don't need to honor others' opinions or our culture or our plans or... Uh, we need to be careful that we put God first, God's word. And I want to encourage you, make a plan of how you will value God's word for the next month. Make a plan. Uh, it, maybe, maybe you already are. Uh, but do more than just read. Uh, read, study, memorize. Now, it, it doesn't mean you have to spend 10 hours a day doing it. But you, you got lots of little moments. And uh, you can make time. Listen, if... Uh, Somebody said, I need to meet with you. I got, a, I got a million dollar check I've got to give you. You would make time for them. Well, God's word is, is spiritual riches. Make time for him. And uh, make a plan to read, to study, and uh, to understand God's word. You know, there's lots of helps you can get. I brought a few along. Um, this is a Bible dictionary. I don't use it as much now because I use my computer, but uh, pretty much all the New Testament words... Uh, it, it'll help you to understand you know, what, the, what the background and so on. Uh, books like this, Christian Growth from A to Z. Yeah, you can, it takes topically different, different things and goes, goes through. Uh, here's, here's an interesting one, The 10-Minute Bible Journey. <laughs> it's put out by the creation people. Uh, you read part of the scripture and then they give you a, an overview. It's like a sur quick survey of the Bible in 52 quick reads. Uh, we, we used to, when people got saved, we'd give them, uh, adults, we would give them a children's picture Bible. It was particularly one we used, and we'd encourage them to read right through it, because they'd get all the, the flow of, of God's Word. You know, it's not, we, we'd say, this is not a Bible, this is a, this is a cartoon, uh, but it'll give you all the stories and give you the flow. There, there's a lot of things you can do, but listen, none of these books are a substitute for God's Word. They can help you, Sometimes they'll help you, sometimes they'll confuse you. Uh, but God's word is the key. And if you're saved, you have God's Holy Spirit. You can ask him. You, you've got a church, you can, you can get help. Uh, some of you are banding together, having Bible studies and so on. You, you know, with confusion, you're rubbing your head and saying, what did preacher mean when he said that? Uh, yeah, we, can, we can figure it all out, and God can help us. So the, the most basic of things when we come to faith is, we need to hear and understand what God is saying. And that, that will change our lives. All right, well, let's, let's quit there uh, for tonight. And let's take some prayer requests and, and spend some time in prayer.